We have the best fourth quarter seller and the perfect affordable gift idea. These easy 3D map ornaments. And we'll show you how we made them right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? So do we. And we have new videos each week. It's holiday season and custom 3D map ornaments are the perfect affordable gift idea. Did you go on vacation this summer? Maybe you went to the lake, maybe you visited a new town, maybe you recently moved. Places evoke emotional responses. So to create an ornament that is a memento of a place that you visited is a great gift idea. And they're hot sellers. Now we've done these 3D maps before, a couple of years ago maybe, I don't remember. But we used Snazzy Maps and Adobe Illustrator. That was pretty involved for newbies, but I think we got a newbie proof a solution. Step one, we're gonna gather all our supplies. We're cutting these ornaments out of some wood. We're gonna use some eighth inch birch and some eighth inch walnut. And because the roads are gonna get super tiny and be impossible to glue, we're gonna use some of this double-sided like adhesive tape. We're also gonna use just a little bit of our Foxy Hughes paints here because we do need to color in that water. We have a river going through ours, so we're gonna paint it blue so that it really pops and stands out. This is going to be an ornament, so we need to add a little ribbon for the, a little bow to your ornament. We're gonna add a little twine. We're gonna use some Starbond Thick to do the gluing another piece of the ornament that doesn't have the tiny little roads on it. And then we have some wooden beads. Each of the ornaments are gonna have a wood bead on them. <laughs> that is it. Step two, we're gonna make our design. We're gonna be using the Laser Map Maker software. This software is a great way to make easy, laser cut maps. We're gonna be making an ornament for this particular project, but you don't have to make ornaments. You can make large wall size hangings. You can even tile them so that you can take one design and separate it into multiple tiles. And it makes this process so easy. We're gonna be using the starter application. We're just gonna go through the little starter track and- A couple of clicks, couple of clacks, and you got yourself a map. Yes. <laughs> so let's meet you over in the software. Here we are in Laser Map Maker, lasermapmaker.com. We started with a free trial. You can try it for free. This gives you two weeks and nine credits. For the ornament that we'll be doing, we'll be using three credits. So this will give you an opportunity to try maybe three different ornaments with three different locations, or technically it's three different exports. We've already created our free trial. We're gonna select a new project here. And then we're gonna call our project name Richmond Virginia Ornament 2. I'm gonna do that. And then you can choose your template here. You can start with a blank template or a starter template. We're gonna use the starter template today to keep it simple. And it's really all that I needed to do this project. So starter template, create project. And here we are right in the map maker. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is select our location or choose our coordinates. So we're gonna go over here to the search bar on the right hand side and say search slash set coordinates. So if I search Richmond, Virginia, There we are, pretty zoomed in for Richmond, Virginia. And we can go with that, or I'm gonna wanna zoom out a little bit here. So I can just click on zoom, and now I'm just using the scroll button on my mouse, and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So the James River is a pretty important feature within Richmond, and then these set of roads here are called the fan. So I wanna make sure they're in there because that's what people are gonna recognize. They're gonna recognize the river, river and they're gonna recognize the fan. So I think this is a pretty good view here. And because this is an ornament, we're gonna to wanna to change the shape. So over here on the right hand side, map shape, we'll click that and change it to a circle. All right, I'm liking that. Let me go back to my zoom, let me just see. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit again. I don't wanna lose too much of the roads here, but I do wanna see the fan. So I think that looks pretty good. The next thing we're gonna do is preview our export. It's going to prepare the map layers and we have to stay on this screen a moment while it does the preparation. All 
All right, it has created our three layers for us. It has a land layer, which will be our cut layer. You can see here. The next layer is the land layer engrave. And then the third layer is the roads layer. And that looks good too. From here, I can just click export. Export cost is three credits because I have three layers here and just select export. I confirm that I have reviewed my layer and options and then export. Once it's done with the export, you can see here that it's processing and this is going to take, take about a minute or two for it to finish processing and once it says complete, then I can download my zip file. Now that the processing has completed, we can see that we have each of our SVG layers. Each layer is its own SVG. So you'll see the land layer cut SVG, land layer engrave SVG, and then roads layer cut SVG. It's also going to create a satellite view here, which we aren't going to use, but it will export that. It'll also export this attribution SVG. This is just showing that we're using Mapbox, but we won't use the, either of these SVGs that it creates. We're just going to use these three. Here we are in Lightburn. We're going to import our file that we just exported from MapMaker. Let's say file import. We're going to start with our roads layer. This comes in pretty large. The first thing I'm going to do is delete this outer frame. I'm not going to use that. And then I'm going to select everything and say control G. It's important to group these items because we're going to be doing some things with them where they need to be grouped. So I'm going to just do that first thing. And then I'm going to change the size of this. Of this. It's at 14 inches right now. So I'm going to change it down to four inches, which will be ornament size. But I'm going to make sure my aspect ratio is locked. So it changes the width and height at the same time. All right, now we're down to four inches. We're going to put this on the red layer. This is red we use for cutting. So this we're going to cut out. And then I'm going to add a little rectangle here because I want to add a little banner that actually says Richmond, Virginia. Now this isn't going to really work because you can see it's outside of the circle frame. So I'm going to go back to my selection tool and I'm going to convert this rectangle to path, convert to path. And now I'm going up here and I'm going to click edit nodes. There's your menu button there. And now I can adjust my rectangle so that it is inside the perimeter of the circle. There we go. Now with my rectangle and then my roads layer all grouped, I'm going to select everything. And then over here on the left hand side, I'm going to select weld all selected shapes together. There we go. Now we have a little banner where I can actually type the name of the city. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to select my type tool here and then I'm going to type Richmond. I'm going to do it in all caps, Richmond, Virginia. I'm going to put this in the black layer. This will be engrave and you can see already it selected the mode as fill. And then I'm going to put that right here in the middle. Let's zoom in. Let's see, just going to eyeball this for now. Now this looks good. I'm going to select everything, click control G, slide that out of the way and import the other layers. So I'm going to say file import. I'm going to import the land layer. Again, it comes in really large. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete the frame and then I'm going to select everything, click control G. And I'm going to put this on the red layer. Again, I'm going to change the size to four inches. And that's our back layer. Now I'm going to import the land layer 
and grieve. Here we are. Now again, I'm gonna first change this to four inches so I can work with it a little bit. Now, as we look at this layer, when it comes in, you can see, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You can see that there's a pink layer that has an outer, the outside edge, and then there's an inside edge of the street layer. Now we know we don't need that inside edge. I'm not going to be cutting that. I'm not going to be engraving that. So I'm just going to remove that. So I can just click on it and I can hit delete and remove that one. This outer layer is going to be a cut layer. So I'm gonna change that to red. Now I'm going to not show that. And then I'm going to select the roads here. I'm gonna make sure I get everything. Now I'm gonna hit Control G. I wanna group these. And now I'm gonna bring back my circle layer. Now I want to combine the river layer here in the middle with the roads layer. So I'm actually going to, with my roads grouped, I'm gonna stack this right on top of where the river is. So here, I'm gonna bring this down. That is already grouped. The roads are already grouped. So I'm gonna select the both of them and center them. And now you can see that the roads and the river are centered. You'll see the river is running right through where the gap in the roads are. Now that looks great. So I'm going to cut out the river and engrave the roads. I'm gonna group these two together now, Control G. And now this third layer here will be the backer layer. I can paint this blue so that you'll see the river behind the street layer. Now we have all three layers of our ornament. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is create a little hole for the string so that we can hang our ornament. So I'm gonna create a little circle over here And let's see, it says 0.156, is that about right? I think that'll work. So we're gonna select our circle, select our outer frame, and we're going to go up here and say, oh, the second one here, align top. Now we know that this is aligned to the top and it's aligned in the middle Align V center, top middle, perfect. I'm gonna copy that same circle. Control C, Control V. I'm gonna bring it over here to this layer. Let's make sure everything is grouped. Before we do this, Control G. We're gonna put our little circle here and I'm gonna select them both. And we're going to align V center and then align top. Now that's the same, and we're gonna do the same thing. Control C, Control V, I'm gonna put it over here and select them both, align V center, and then align top. Now, all three of these are in the same place, so I'm gonna select them all. Can I move them all at one time? I'm not 100% sure about this. I'm gonna hit Control, shift so that I can do micro movements and then I'm just going to move them down a little bit. I think I'm going to move it down a little bit more. That looks pretty good. That's going to give me enough room at the top. It's inside this frame here and now we know they're all in the same place on the ornament. So I'm going to go ahead and group each of these so we don't lose that. All right, and now we have the three layers of our ornament. This will be our roads layer, it's gonna be cut. This is gonna be the center layer, which will have the street names engraved and the river cut out. And then this will be the layer that's gonna be painted blue so that you can see the river through it. That'll be the bottom layer. Now before we exit this, let's update our speed and power settings. 
Now that our export is completed, I'm going to go back in and show you some other features that you can change and adjust and modify. I wanted to keep it simple for our first export, but do want to show you that there are some other options that you can modify here. Here you can see for the land layer, each layer has some options. Both are selected, land fill, water fill. For the land layer, engrave, roadways, primary streets, there's only one selection, it's selected. And then roads layer, you can see here, there are 14 items selected. So you can click to select them all, but they were already selected, you saw the 14. And you can choose to include or not include some of these. For us, all of them were fine. I don't have a bunch of these things in my city, but in your city or town, you may want to include or uh, not include some of these items. Another thing that you can do, let me explain, expand that, under roadways primary, th click the three dots, or just click the layer in and of itself, and then you can make some, some adjustments over here. So feature filters, the zoom range can change. So here you can see, I put it back to where it was, but if I zoomed in, some of the roads go away. We might not wanna see all of the roads. But like I mentioned, uh, this is, our town is famous for the fan, so I wanted to make sure that we included the fan in the roadways. You can change the line color. So ours is currently under uh, black, but if I wanted to change it to something else, you can make that change and it'll, let's see. There you go click override, it'll change the primary roads and change their color. I'm just gonna put it back to black. There we go. You can also change the opacity and the line width. This is one of the primary things I wanted to show you on this view. The default is set to seven, but if these end up being too thin for you and the roads end up, the cuts are just too tiny, you can change it. In the demo video that Laser Map Maker has for ornaments, I think that Elias changes his to 14 and that's gonna give you a much wider cut area for the road, which is great. But in my case, it really loses some of the detail in the city and combines some of these fan streets. So I'm gonna put mine back to seven, knowing that my roads are gonna be a little bit thin. And then you can change the line join from bevel, round, miter. So I just wanted to show you some of the other features that were included and adjustments that you can make to your map. Step three, we're gonna make all of our cuts. We're gonna bring our two pieces of wood over to our Omtech Polar and we're gonna cut out our ornaments. Time to assemble. We're gonna paint the backer blue to make it look like some water. Then we're just gonna pull the tape off of this backer, slap it on this one, and then slap this on the backer. Easy as pie. Step five, time to dress it up for the holidays. It's looking nice, but now we want it to sell right. and make it feel like it's a real product. <laughs> so we're gonna add a little hanger with some twine, a bead, and a little bow. And I'm gonna show you how to make a little bow. And then the we're gonna go ahead and uh, drop it in a little cellophane bag with a backer on it. And uh, it looks professional. I'm going to show you how to make a cute little bow for the top of your ornament. So this is cut at 14 inches. I'm going to use this two finger method. My fingers are kind of short, but I can still do it. So I'm going to put a little bit out here. I'm going to leave a little for a tail. I'm going to go from left to right, wrap it around my fingers. And then once it's here, I'm going to come back and tuck it down underneath. 
Garrett should be doing this. You've got the long fingers. This would be perfect for you. I know. My fingers don't touch ribbon. <laughs> and now it crosses over right here. I'm just going to tuck this in and under right here. This is velvety, so it's a little hard to get it in there. And I'm going to make sure the velvet is showing on top. Get that velvet. Depending upon your ribbon, you may or may not have to fiddle with it quite that much. And there's your little bow. So I'm gonna slide it off my fingers and now I could just pull it through. I'm gonna pull it through using the little loops here. Make it tight. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. Don't know your own strength. Right? I'm just pulling it away. I'm pulling away at this thing. There we go. Cute little bow. And now I'm going to use these tiny zip ties. Of course, you can use um, hot glue or um, probably just star bond to it. Um, you know, wire. Yeah, I probably could, but I figure if they're going to stay year after year, then a glue might mess up if you have your ornament in your in your attic or something. So I can attach it with a tiny zip tie. And then we're going to cut ourselves a little piece of twine. We want about three inches at the top. So let's see. Let me see what this is. I'm going to cut this at about 12 inches. Ooh, 12 incher. Doesn't have to be exact. And I'm going to first feed it through the bead. Pretty simple. And then feed it through my ornament. Oh, I guess I didn't have to do the bead first. And then we're going to tie our little bow right to the top. Don't mind the backer, it's a stunt double. Oh yeah, don't worry about the back of this. This one's perfect. Now we're just gonna drop these little guys into these little packages that Kim made. They're just a little cellophane envelope with a uh, cardstock in here. Right, I just found this little design right on Canva. I just searched for holiday postcard, printed them on some cardstock using my regular old printer. And then all we have to do is drop our ornaments in. Fix your bow. Fix your bow. That might be the hardest part. Really struggling with yours. Don't forget to brand the back of your ornament. We mm -hmm. don't have it on these just because we haven't done it yet, but we will before we sell them. That's a cute little guy, a little cute little packaging. Oh, you're sealing it up. Well, you're ready I, to go. I have tons of these. <laughs> <laughs> ah, these things look so cute in their little packaging. I, I might actually buy one of these little things, and I, I'm not an ornament buyer. <laughs> these are great. Uh, you can sell these, I think, for somewhere between 12 and 15. You can offer a bundle of these, oh, maybe bundle. maybe two for 25 or $15 each. So whatever you think they'll go for in your area, they're a great gift idea, and I think there's a pretty good profit margin here. Oh, there is a great profit margin. These are easy to do. I think once you do an area, you can pump a ton of these out. And you could probably leave this front banner open, and if you have a laser at your booth, like the F1 or something, you could throw names and stuff on there. Mm -hmm. Woo! That'd mm -hmm. be a good seller right there. That is, that is a good chunk of change. Well, we are about out of time. I have to go make some more ornaments. You have to go test out Laser Map Maker, see what kind of ornament you can make. Otherwise, big thanks to all of our patrons. We love you guys, and that is the best way to support this channel. That is the best community over there. It's holiday season. It's holiday season. And? It's holiday season, and custom 
ornaments. Do you like to do it, build it or make it? So do we. And it's, I forgot my own line that I've said 400 and something times. At least. It's holiday season and custom ornaments. It's the holiday season and custom personalized Just fudge. Custom Just custom ornaments. It's holiday season and custom <clears throat> it's ridiculous. And then I got a ball sack. <laughs> Clickety clack, you got yourself a map. 